Hi, everybody. Welcome to episode 20 of Long Distance Sisters. Yes, okay. 20. 20. Um, <laughs> today, I'm going to nerd out a lot. Serena's probably going to nerd out a lot. And Tori, not as much, but probably a little. First of all, environmental. I just didn't study it. First of all, it's not nerding out. It's how to be a better citizen, and we all should be doing it. Human. So, <laughs> this in this week's episode, we are going to be sharing some eco-friendly tips that we have picked up in our twenty some years of life. I will go first. <clears throat> oh, let me get out my lip. Wait, did we intro it? Oh yeah. Yes. Okay. This is what I'm passionate about. Reusable coffee pods and grounds. I have an espresso machine that Tori kindly gave me when she was leaving college that I could have when I went to college. And K-cups or K-pods or whatever they're called, Nespresso cups, they're all so wasteful. They're expensive. It's a lot cheaper to buy reusable coffee pods and fill them with coffee grounds like over time. And they last forever way cheaper it's the same effect k-cups are so wasteful i can't stand them yes serena i agree i feel coffee pods are very wasteful however no and i, I know i feel bad every time i use my pot okay <laughs> i feel the guilt mm -hmm. but i am a coffee snob mm -hmm. and i will say that I've tried using the reusable ones and the coffee just always comes out bitter to me, for me. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like it, they don't work out and they've made my machine poor, funky. So mm -hmm. I don't want to break my machine. And not saying that they will. It was probably just the ones I tried. And like, I like the crema on top and it never came out with the crema when I used those pods. Yeah, well, I have pods that do leave a bit of a crema. Not huge, not as the same as a regular Nespresso, but they do leave a bit. Um, but there are programs, like if offices have, you know, if they use K-cups or whatever, there are, like, programs that can recycle those that your office can sign up into. Like, our dad worked for an environmental agency, so they had, like, this system in place. So Yeah, and I small, do, like... Um, cause I have a Nespresso machine like you, um, and they will send, when you order pods, they send you a bag to send them back, send back the used pods. So I usually try to do that. Sometimes though, it's just like the bag gets so smelly. And if I like package one up and send it and I don't have a new one yet, I just have to throw them away. But I do try to send them back so they recycle them, but and last summer, Tori left that bag in her car, and some cockroaches found it. Ew. Lived in her trunk. I'm trying to save the apartment. Leave me alone. <laughs> I'm not perfect. <laughs> I know, but then I question, I'm like, okay, if they get these and they're all moldy, like, do they still <laughs> take them, you know? Or do they just throw them out because they're like, ew. But also, how can you avoid them getting moldy, like... It's going to take a while to fill up the bag. They're just sitting in there, you know? Mm -hmm. So I don't know. But anyway, that's probably enough time talking about coffee pods. Just do your best. Do what makes you happy. If the coffee doesn't do it for you with the reusable pods, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. And for, for all of these tips, just in general, um, let me find them. Okay. Just like, this isn't about like, we do all this stuff and we're perfect, like we're not. Just do your best, find what works for you, take baby steps, that applies to everything. Mm -hmm. Like not everything's gonna work for everyone. Just find ways that you can, what's more convenient for you now. And as those things become habit, maybe add a new habit and yeah. so on and so forth. Yeah, and don't be offended unless you use plastic water bottles. Then you suck. <laughs> and throw them in the trash. <laughs> Plus, your water tastes like plastic. Gross. Yeah. Anyway. Um, 
McKenna but is. I actually. Oh, sorry. Oh, who's next? Tori. I was talking about this today, like feeling guilty. And it's like, where do you choose convenience and maybe like other priorities over the sustainability? Because um, I was talking to some coworkers about like portion control with snacks, you know, and like how you, oh no, I ate the whole bag of chips, you know? And so we were like, well, we could like pre-proportion them out, like in, in the pantry, like put a bunch of chips, like each in plastic bags or like a portion in each plastic bag or something. And I was like, I thought of that before, but I haven't done it because I'm like, but the environment, you know, that's so unsustainable. Just, just but, then I'm like, but then I'm like, but it's also my health. And this is something convenient for my health where I would probably actually stick with it. You know what I mean? Like, it's kind of like, where's the line? You just have to find what works for you. And I know just, you can use like the reusable ones, but not everyone has those and they tend to be expensive. But um, most like, people, I'm oh, sorry to cut you off. Most people have containers. Just yeah. use but they don't have that many containers. Well, okay, when like I, 10 when I, the chips. Sorry, hey, when I meal prep every day, like for work the next day, or like at least four out of five days, I just pour it into like the same container each day. Like my popcorn goes in the same container each day and stuff. Yeah, and but then no, if I'm you're talking eating at home, like just pour your snack into a bowl. And then yeah, the I'm talking about having it pre-proportioned. Pre-portioned. It's not pre-proportioned. Pre okay. Pre -proportioned. Like, as in I take the ba whole bag of chips or popcorn mm -hmm. or crackers and pour it into, like, ten baggies all portioned out. Well, they do have reusable sealed baggies now. I know, but they tend to be expensive is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Not everybody has well, those. then take and the... 30 seconds it takes each night to pour it into the same container. I know, but then that's eat. the problem is then that's where people don't stay consistent it's, with it. So if you're doing it because you're trying to eat healthier and convenience is a big factor of why you, you know, don't eat as healthy because it's just more convenient to grab the bag of chips than take the time to do it because a lot of people just won't. Like, mm -hmm. so it's just, and then it's all pointless. And I well, mean, containers, yes, but I don't have enough containers to have, like, 10 chips and 10 crackers and then also mm -hmm. use it for my leftovers and lunch prep, you know? Like, yes. Plus, then it would just get really crowded. <laughs> yes. However, I mean, you don't have to, you don't have to buy new things to make this work. I think people no. have more, people have more containers than they realize they do. Like glass jars that have sauces and jellies and everything, empty peanut butter containers, empty butter containers, empty, I don't know, uh, yogurt containers, like with resealable lids and whatever. Like you can yeah. use all of those things again. Like yeah. there's nothing. I've been told mine and I use those for like s storing fruit and stuff, which I'll talk mm -hmm. about. That's one of my points. Um, mm -hmm. But again, well, like the problem I run into is I don't have enough space to save them all. <laughs> mm -hmm. like when they're not in use and like um yeah it just depends yeah. it just depends. well if you have to use a plastic baggie then you can use it more than once yeah that's well, what i have okay. like i've had the same little box of plastic baggies like oh since i moved in to my apartment mm -hmm. like 16 months ago because i just like reuse them if you can you know obviously if it's something that takes too much cleaning like no, I'm not going to spend five minutes cleaning a plastic bag. Mm -hmm. But, like, if it was chips or crackers or whatever, yeah, definitely reuse it. Well, when, when I was listening to uh, the podcast, How to Save a Planet, there was an episode that related to, like, plastics and recycling and stuff. And they said, like, those yogurt containers or hummus containers or whatever, don't use that to store food again. Because that's not meant for, like, long-term use like that. And the plastics will start to leach. If you use them, use them to, like, store things in your room or something. But you shouldn't be using those for food storage over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Use, like, actual, like, if you have Tupperware, use the actual Tupperware that's made for that. So, or use them flimsy or plastics. Yeah. 
Well, I'm not sure about those either. either. Well, that's what you... those would be the flimsier ones. Rather than like the salt, like a peanut butter jar is like a harder plastic, you know? It, Versus, like, I, hummus. they didn't differentiate between like hummus, yogurt, peanut butter, Ziploc baggies. Or no. use them, you know, for two or three more goes. And then by that point, you've gone through another thing of yogurt. And then just keep, and then get rid of the old one. And three to move your phone. It. No, that's where my notes are. <laughs> Move your phone. So put it on airplane phone. mode. No. Put it on airplane mode. It's so what's your tip, Tori? Okay, so <laughs> tip. I guess I'll just go right into my food waste tip. Is not so much how like how we're keeping and storing food. I mean, it is that. But I mean, packaging food, not mm -hmm. so much about the packaging, but about how we're actually storing the physical food so that it lasts longer because the waste of the food itself mm -hmm. is a problem. Like, I forget the statistic, but it's like the average American home wastes like 20% of the food they buy, like throws mm -hmm. it away, like uh, whether it's produce or something that expires or whatever. And I can preach to that. We have recently thrown out a bunch of expired food because my boyfriend's a hoarder. Like I just threw out, I just threw out a bag of Boom Chicka Pop popcorn that expired in 2017. This boy has moved this bag of popcorn like to five different apartments. How is that possible? I don't know, <gasps> but. We were eating a lot of the expired food, you know, if it didn't, like, if it wasn't stale, like, things like boxed mixes and stuff, but mm -hmm. honestly, we were just, like, it doesn't taste as good, it doesn't cook as well, like, you know, it, like, it's funky in some way, and, like, mm -hmm. maybe it's the reason our stomachs are hurting. <laughs> so, I was just, like, no, we're gonna start fresh, okay, I'm, I'm gonna release the guilt of throwing away all this food. Because now we're not going to waste food. <laughs> we're not going to move expired popcorn again. <laughs> so um, so I've been really looking into ways to reduce food waste. So, you know, re repackaging uh, grains and cereals and things that often go stale. So like, um, you know, well, cereal and... Mm -hmm crackers, chips, cookies, whatever, putting them into other containers. So I do save like, not usually all of my plastic containers from foods I buy, but I do save all the glass ones. Mm. And so I've been putting stuff into those or buying some of the big containers from the store that is meant for food storage, mm. um, especially making sure they have like a suction sort of seal like a silicone around the edge because otherwise it's still going to go stale mm -hmm. um so really trying to when I get home from the grocery store be like okay what needs to be repackaged mm -hmm. so to speak or recontained mm -hmm. and then also for produce storing things in water helps a lot so like actually immersing it in water especially with like cucumbers bell peppers um things like that and then storing things in glass so like putting i come home and i cut the tops off all my strawberries and put them all in a glass container um all my fruit really not like apples but like all the berries and little stuff i put into glass jars um and then i got a tip from emily mariko and <laughs> she when she has a bag of lettuce or spinach or whatever or container whatever she puts paper towels in the back like in the bottom and it absorbs all the liquid that usually is what makes it kind of go uh stale mm -hmm. and yes I know paper towel right there but again I think it's okay to, it's good to have paper towels on hand but don't make them what you're primarily using for most things but there are times where like it doesn't make sense to use not a paper towel like mm -hmm. I'm not gonna put like a rag that I clean sometimes clean like 
the floor mm-hmm. with into my spinach, even though it's been cleaned. Yeah, no. like it's it's not that that clean, you know. Yeah. I'm not keeping track of which rags I use for what. Mm-hmm. Well, and I have dogs, so I have to clean up their messes sometimes. So I need paper towels on hand, but okay. I have the same <laughs> container or same you know package of them for a long time. I will say on the paper towel front, um, I mean, in my undergrad, I was in the school of forestry and natural resources. Um, So I heard a lot about paper and paper production. And I mean, as long as it has some kind of sustainability, like FSC um, certification, a paper product, like I trust that it is totally sustainable. Like paper farming, it has gotten so much more sustainable these days. I agree. Um, we also have to yeah. think about the sustainability of our wallet. <laughs> yes. And if you're, yes. e- they're A, more expensive, and B, you're buying it more often versus if you're yeah. using rags that were free. Yeah, you I mean, I'm still on the same paper towel roll that for like the past eight months. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and I've barely made a dent. Yeah. So, like, if I'm cleaning, like, dirt off like the floor that I tracked in from the marsh like I'm using a paper towel yeah 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 I use the rags mostly for everything the the countertops mm-hmm. cut up old t-shirt to make rags there's a quick tip exactly mm-hmm. yeah. old clothes make perfect rags mm-hmm. um but yeah so just paying attention and taking the time to store my food properly when I get home from the store Mm -hmm. um helps because I also have a problem with procrastination convenience and things if I don't do it right when I get home I'm not going to do it so yeah yeah Yeah. and don't overbuy. like only buy what you can really sustainably eat until your next trip to the grocery store I've I've been working on that too um like thinking like okay realistically I probably will go to the grocery store in about a week or two from now Mm-hmm. Like, is this something that I'm going to be out of at home within that time? Or am I just buying it because it's convenient? You know, like, mm-hmm. sometimes yeah, always I have half a container of yogurt. Like, that's probably enough for a week, you know? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, always make note of what you have in your fridge if you're going to the grocery store. You don't have to make, like, a whole list. I like making lists. I like finding the weekly specials, finding coupons. I'm that kind of person. Yeah. But... Just being like, okay, like I might need three more veggies in my fridge for this next week or two. Which veggies can last that long? Like I'm going to get spinach. I'm probably going to have to finish that bag this week. Mm-hmm. Like just thinking. Use the paper out. towel trick, girl. My last spinach bag lasted three weeks. It was fine. I finished it. That's the only reason I threw it away. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. It was, I was amazed. So the paper towel trick works. You got to change the paper towel sometimes, but it works for all, all things, all lettuce. Okay. Um, moving, but yeah. moving on. Um, so I guess I'll go off the food thing and say, if you order takeout a lot, I know my boyfriend orders takeout a lot. He also just moved into a new apartment and he doesn't have any pots or pans or baking sheets or anything yet. Um, but just be mindful, like, yeah, cooking's not for everyone, but if you batch prep like some rice at, on the weekend, that's always easy. Um, pre-cook some potatoes in the, like literally in the microwave. There's a potato setting on most microwaves. Mm-hmm. Um, but doing stuff like that makes cooking at home easier and it's also more affordable. But when you do um, get takeout, you can ask like, hey, I don't need any plastic utensils mm-hmm. or like napkins or like a bunch of little soy sauce packets mm-hmm. or anything. Yeah. So you can always reduce that way, but mm-hmm. still get the enjoyment out of getting takeout. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes they do Look, Tori said they just throw them in anyway because that's what they're used to. But that is one thing that kills me, especially like I watch a lot of Disney vloggers, even though I like despise Disney, I still watch them. And um, so they always go to like the food festivals and they know they're going there to eat a bunch of different foods, but they don't bring like their own silverware. 
them home or they don't keep the same fork and go around i, I just keep the same fork yeah this Disgusting. year um disney has like a reusable fork that's like four dollars mm -hmm. um that's like spike the bee which is the mascot of the current festival and they usually sell um like souvenir reusable utensil and straw um packages mm -hmm. for people to carry around but also you you really can just bring it from home I carry just a regular fork, a regular spoon, and a regular knife in my backpack. And when I travel, it's just a fork and a spoon because I don't want to bring a knife. Don't bring that into Disney. I once got stopped by security for bringing a kitchen knife. Yeah. Like, not, not just like a regular butter knife. Yeah. And I was like, but I'm going to work. I need it to cut my lunch. And they're like, <laughs> he got the head of security over and the head of security was like, dude. She, if she's going to work, she's fine. <laughs> we test her. Yeah, but that's just like, it's so, it's so easy to just wrap up a thing or put it in any container or bag or whatever with your own silverware. Like, I, I remember when we were waiting so in line for Flight of Passage mm -hmm. and I went and picked up like our food for us to mm -hmm. eat while we were in line. Um, they only had, you can only, they only had plastic forks. And we didn't all have like reusable utensils. So I just grabbed some of the metal forks and then I just took them back once we got <laughs> off the ride. Yeah, I remember that. But yeah, be mindful of your plastic utensils because they, they're too small to be recycled anyway. So like it's, they are really just trash immediately. And if you do have them, don't just like throw them out, keep them. That can be the thing you keep in your bag always. I've seen them a couple of times. They're not yeah, really exactly. as long because they're shit, but okay. Yeah. I yeah. do have another tip that ties right into that. Mm -hmm. um, like knowing what your recycling center takes. Mm -hmm. um, so some of them take um, wax cork cardboards, like the cardboards you find for freezer foods. Mm -hmm. um, and some, most don't though, but when I came down here, I looked up our recycling center and what they took, and they took those wax cardboards, mm -hmm. um, which also meant they took the, our, the almond milk cartons and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but you can also take, like, if you get plastic bags from grocery shopping instead of having your reusable bags, a lot of grocery centers have spots out front for you to return those plastic bags after. And sometimes they'll also have, like, styrofoam an egg carton returns out there too. And it'll say on the bins exactly what they take. Mm -hmm. um, but some recycling centers, it's not that widespread yet, but some, um, like the one we had when we, we lived in Marietta, Georgia a while back, they took the hefty energy bag. And that allows you to recycle a whole heck of a lot more than um, most recycling like facilities. And you could do plastic utensils, plastic straws, plastic bags, and all that stuff in there. Um, but yeah, just knowing what your recycling center takes, don't just be like, oh, they might take this, they might not, let me throw it in. Because mm -hmm. if they don't take it, then it's more likely that the recycling center is going to have to produce more of their own trash. And they're going to have to pay more the more trash they have to throw out. Mm -hmm. And um, that's how some recycling centers go bankrupt. Mm -hmm. So you don't want your recycling center to close because you just kept throwing in random stuff. Mm -hmm. And some for some facilities, it's that like, if there's a certain percentage of non-recyclable material in this whole load, the whole load has to get thrown out. Yeah. So yeah, just that's mindful. That's a big problem, like just from my perspective on a college campus, if there is one plastic bag in the dumps or in the recycling or you know something with food in it still it, all of it just gets thrown out mm -hmm. and as much as the students get educated on it it's they still don't get it <laughs> and on top of that like mm -hmm. the things you recycle have to be like less than one percent contaminated so like mm -hmm. If you don't rinse out the almond milk carton or you don't rinse out the yogurt container, like it's the can of beans and take off the paper wrapping. Yeah. With um peanut butter jars are always hard to clean, but they're usually like a number one plastic or whatever. So a lot of places will take them. I just put it in the dishwasher. <laughs>
yeah just because it gets clean that way okay next and it's actually more sustainable to use your dishwasher than hand wash your dishes people yes but make sure your dish have a dishwasher the opposite mm-hmm. well make sure your dishwasher is also a full load if you're doing half loads then it's wasteful but and if you don't have a dishwasher, don't feel guilty because I don't have a dishwasher. <laughs> Temporary. It does go on food waste. Okay. And it has to do with meal kits that get delivered to your door. I don't like them. I am anti. I think they are very wasteful in the sense that a lot of energy is spent to get materials to that factory, we'll call it. And then a lot of energy is spent to get those materials in the factory to you but then also these meal kits they only give you meals they don't give you you know eggs gallon of milk butter so you still have to butter yeah so you on top of all that energy being spent to get that meal kit stuff to you you still have to go to the store and buy those other necessities and I actually just read an article today for my class and it said so food emission or food the whole process of food is one third of the world's um, total emissions which is like 35 percent yes and um in the transportation aspect oh my voice got raspy um it is the transportation that releases the most emissions is us like on our own driving to the store and back. Not aviation, not boats or whatever, trains, trucks. It's us going to and from the store, driving our own cars. So, you know, that's even more waste. And then all the meal kits, you know, everything's split up into little individual plastic things. And I know they do their best to try and be sustainable and everything. And I know people find it helpful, but I can't stand it. I will say though, I think it depends on your reasoning for doing the meal kit. Mm -hmm. Like if it's maybe because you tend to overbuy at grocery stores, have a lot of food waste, it does Mm -hmm. definitely cut back on food waste. That's like, true. Hundred yes. percent, because the portion is more portioned. Even, mm-hmm. um, but yes, you still have to go to the grocery store because it's only pretty much covering a few dinners a week. It's not really mm-hmm. covering your breakfast or snacks or lunch necessarily. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's also it depends what works for you. Like if you need that convenience factor because of your job or your lifestyle or. Um, your health maybe you know if it Mm -hmm. if it's between eating quick and easy meals that are unhealthy or you know choosing Mm -hmm. to do go the meal kit route so that you can have a more healthy balanced Mm -hmm. meal at the end of the day it's fine like don't Mm -hmm. feel guilty for using it and there are meal kits that go above and beyond to try and do it as much as Mm -hmm. they can to make recyclable like Mm -hmm. I used every plate for a bit and like the they had specific instructions on how to make the bag that like the dry ice came in uh recyclable Mm -hmm. Um, all of the insulation was recyclable cardboard Mm -hmm. um and then the food was it that packaging yeah like it was relatively normal packaging like I wouldn't say they use excessive packaging the only thing was like a plastic bag that they kind of group some of the smaller items in but Mm -hmm. other than that everything was just kind of thrown in the box I mean obviously the meats were like wrapped or something but yeah like they weren't wrapping like Mm -hmm. the produce or Mm -hmm. anything like I think I've I think I've heard all of like the hello fresh stuff is recyclable all that packaging hello fresh Mm -hmm. meats come wrapped in uh, paper mm-hmm. um, so it just, and, it just depends but this also goes on food waste a lot of people say that it helps them reduce their food waste too exactly yeah. i said that True. but um, if you if you have the means shopping locally or goods that were grown locally will really cut down on those emissions spent not only to get that food to the grocery store but also you know, you driving to the grocery store. Yeah, like I live over 30 minutes from a grocery store and I just tack it on when I drive into town for like cheer practice. I 
just go the extra little bit. But my boyfriend's new apartment is a five minute walk from the Walmart Super Center. So I can grocery shop. I can walk to the grocery store. Walmart is not good. Actually, Walmart's produce usually uses local stuff, I feel like. And from, you know, we're still on food and plastics. I just saw this TikTok where um, she used her plastic bottles, like, you know, from Gatorades or something she had bought. And she put them in the bottom of her pots for her plants as a like a space filler so that she didn't have to use as much soil and b it created drainage without having to buy like rocks and stuff to put down there so Mm. she just threw like three or four plastic bottles in there and then they're being reused Mm. they're upcycled for something else well isn't it worrisome of having like plastic that those chemicals leach i wouldn't do it in something you're gonna eat but i mean if it's just something pretty that's like a, a monstera. No, I don't know if it might kill your plant. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, probably it's probably fine. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like if it's just like a flower or something, I think it would be fine. But I, I wouldn't do it for like uh, growing veggies or anything but, mm-hmm. or herbs. But yeah, I thought that was cool. And she also talked about like, well, I don't know if it was her. Um. There's some company, I should have written down the name, where they create, like, plastic bricks, quote-unquote. But Mm -hmm. really, it's just, like, you take, they send you, like, this, like, compressor tool, okay? And you take, like, your plastic bottle, like, your Gatorade bottle that you just finished, and Mm -hmm. over time, you collect all the small plastics, like, wrappers, straws, you know, probably utensils all that and you like cram it in and you have to make it like literally use the compressor tool to make it as tight a possible squeeze as you can then when it's full and you have like a few of them or whatever you send Mm -hmm. them to this company and they Mm -hmm. use them to like build houses Mm -hmm. oh actual like bricks quote unquote yeah that reminded me you're apparently not supposed to squish aluminum cans that's bad that like ruins their integrity Huh. Yeah. And they are like infinitely recyclable. Mm-hmm. But then so, what about the space? Girl, like, be sustainable in every aspect. Girl, you live in an apartment. Don't you just have like a communal recycling? Oh, yeah. No, I mean like in my recycling bin. Oh, girl. Like if I leave them whole, it fills up too quickly. Oh, I thought you oh, like wanted same. children. Do you want them to live bottles. in trash? <laughs> You want your children to live in garbage? No, I just didn't know. Okay. Just grab a, <laughs> I didn't know until we Coke instead of a bottle of Coke. What? Next time, just grab a can of Coke instead of a bottle of Coke, guys. Oh, yeah. Or whatever you drink. That's Choose. what I'm talking about. Yeah, but okay. Talk about just can. general to the people. To the people. Okay. Hi, parents. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. Mom doesn't listen. <laughs> well, like Ten people who consistently listen. I don't know. Oh, okay. like, hello, we love you. Tell your <laughs> friends about us. Well, don't tell them we love them. We don't know them. We appreciate your they support. They made us thirty-four cents in ad credit. <laughs> yes. Thanks, guys. Buy three. <laughs> Sick. Okay, Ooh, McKenna. You. Give it away. Take it away, Ernie. Mm, okay. Um, so my master's was, I'm just saying this to give myself some credit. My master's is in fisheries and aquatic sciences. I don't totally buy the whole sustainable fish thing. Like people say like if it has the MSC check or tick, when I say tick, tick is the first thing that I usually say. But I know there's some people that sounds weird. Um, But, okay, so when the fisheries decide how much is, like, the optimum yield for the year, Mm -hmm. which is how much they think they can fish without disturbing the population, that's just based on an educated guess on the, that species, like, population level but they are very open and saying, we have no idea how accurate this guess is. 
Like, if you make an educated guess on the test, you're like, yeah, maybe, but I'm not totally sure. Mm -hmm. That's how they are. So they establish this optimum yield based off that. Um, and whatever the real optimum yield is, if they go lower, if they, like, fish more than that, it can drastically reduce the population. I think in the 90s, this happened, which was, yes, it was back in the 90s, but this was, like, one of the biggest ones. It happened with cod in New England, and mm -hmm. cod has never been able to recover in New England, even though they stopped fishing it there, um, because once cod came, was in such low numbers, mm -hmm. um, I think, like, dogfish and, like, some rays came over and took in took over its niche in the environment, and so cod was never able to come back. Um, I mean, it's 2022. Cod's still not back to uh, pre-drop levels. And I say if you are going to eat, like, seafood or whatever, fish or whatever, go for the sustainable farmed fish. Um, I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't eat fish anyway, but I don't always, some farms, like, they, I see them in documentaries that aren't even like bad mouthing them or anything, just like showing what they are in general. I don't like the look of them. Like even like those open sea pens, some of them I don't like, but that's going to be more um, actually sustainable than wild caught, well, wild caught sustainable mm -hmm. fish. They asked me to bring it up now, so I'm bringing it up now. Eating more plant-based in general. So earlier, Serena said food production is responsible for 35% of greenhouse gas emissions, but 57% of that, which calculates to like 19 point something percent, um, is related to the production of animal-based food. Um, the biggest one culprit of that being like beef, followed by, I believe, cow's milk, pork, and I want to say chicken. Is no, I think it's like lamb. Something. Yeah. Either way, that's a lot of greenhouse gas emissions from um, animal-based animal agriculture, which is also responsible for a lot of the deforestation in the Amazon. They needed land for their like livestock to graze, and they needed land to grow more food for their livestock. Mm -hmm. um, so just you know, eating more plant-based in general, even the United Nations Environmental Program has been urging for years for people, especially those with the means to, in wealthier countries, to switch to more plant-based mm -hmm. diets. Um, and it's not just like, they're not just saying plant-based, like, just eat beans and veggies and anything that comes from the earth. Like, this includes mock meats as well, so according to like a research study done by University of Michigan, a quarter pound Beyond Burger requires 99% less water, 93% less land, 90% fewer greenhouse gas emissions, mm -hmm. and 46% less energy to produce in the U.S. than its beef equivalent. You might want to so, leave these, uh, the specific data you're getting in the description. <laughs> okay, I still have it pulled up. So I'll, I'll try. Um, but yeah, these places I've been saying for, it's been urged a long time to do this. Um, and that like 20% estimate, a lot of people are saying it's very conservative because they don't account for like the deforestation that went into creating those lands mm -hmm. at first. The highest I've heard is 87%, but a lot of like studies outside of the mm -hmm. UN Food and Agriculture Organization, which mm -hmm. does get a lot of funding from agriculture, including animal agriculture. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them are in the 50s. Like animal agriculture is responsible for about 50% of greenhouse gas emissions. Because mm -hmm. yeah, like carbon dioxide comes from a lot of things, but animal agriculture is responsible for I believe 65% nitrous oxide, um, like of those greenhouse gas emissions. And then a lot of methane emissions as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which are, methane, more potent, which are more potent than carbon dioxide. And I believe staying in the atmosphere longer. I could be wrong about that though. Well, methane, 
Methane over time breaks down into carbon dioxide. Yes. Well, but, and, and but, 100... No, no, no. Let me finish. No, okay. Can I stop? Well, no, no, no. Okay, I was not that talking. Okay. Jesus. You just rambled on forever. Um, but methane is like, this is an approximation depending on who you read or whatever, but it's 20 times better. That's not really the right wording, but it's 20 times better as insulating the planet, keeping, retaining heat than carbon dioxide. Like methane is a stronger greenhouse gas. And I say that with quotations. Yeah, because like when it's initially out there, it's 120 times more potent than carbon dioxide. And over the course, I think it's over the course of like 100 years, it averages, the studies show averages anywhere between 20 to 100 times as potent over the course of 100 years, like once it starts degrading and stuff. So still, no matter what, way worse than carbon dioxide. Yeah. yeah. Or did you have something Yeah. Yeah. Again, it's it's up to what fits into your lifestyle best. Like you shouldn't feel like you have to deprive yourself in order to be environment more environmentally friendly or sustainable. Do what do the pieces that fit into your life. Maybe that's doing meatless Monday so that you're mm -hmm. cutting down on meat one day of the week. That's still something that will add up. Um, or it's going full vegan. But um definitely like think about it beforehand I see a lot of people who try to like on a whim be like I'm vegan and it's they like didn't think it over at all and then they go and invest all this money and then like three days later they're eating mm -hmm. the same way they were before and it's like then you have food waste as a problem or you know so think it over make mm -hmm. a plan for it Maybe yeah. talk to a doctor or a dietitian to make sure it's something that will work for you. Because some mm -hmm. people have food sensitivities too that make it difficult to eat vegan. Like soy okay. is a common allergen. So that cuts down okay. on a lot of Yeah, your You're going way off course, Tori. No, but yeah, like we can talk about all this in a different video. But yeah, like I didn't go vegan right away. But again, I what convinced me was watching the documentary Calspiracy, which is all about like the environmental impact of our food. And they have, they Funny. have a lot of sources, but like going into it, I was like, there's no reason for me to switch from going vegetarian to vegan. I'm just watching it to see if I can educate myself further, but less than 10 minutes. And I was like, I have to go vegan. But, <laughs> um, like I talked to my parents and they're like, maybe do a gradual transition. So even though I was already vegetarian, I did like a transition over six mm -hmm. months. I found what I liked. I found the kind of plant mocks I liked. Um, and the reason we chose that time frame was because in the six months, I will be starting college and I could go see the nutritionist for free since I was on the dining plan. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I know that I only buy chicken or turkey, you know, the poultries. Um, and I save red meat for special occasions. Like I love Five Guys. So I go to Five Guys once a year. Um, or like if I'm just at someone's house and they like, they just are making steak that night and I'm like, okay, I, I don't want to be difficult or anything. So I'll just eat it and whatever, and I'll like it, but save it for special occasions and everything. And I don't want to hear any bullshit. Like I'm a meat eater. No, you're not. You're an omnivore. You eat meat as, as much as you eat vegetables and all the other stuff. Okay. You don't need meat. We're vegetarians. <laughs> you don't need meat every single night okay you just don't yeah and you could also like you know if you have meat at lunch and dinner maybe one of those times swap it out for plant-based protein like that's cutting your meat consumption in half which is a dramatic improvement mm -hmm. yeah I'd say people's biggest mistake on like a meatless Monday is not adding enough protein to feel like satiated and full because a lot of times they're like, well, when I don't eat meat, then like I'm hungry an hour later. I'm like, well, did you just eat veggies and rice? Like, <laughs> did you throw in lentils, beans, yeah. nutritional yeast? Don't <laughs> look into it. Maybe on a meatless Monday, maybe you take a vitamin in the morning, you know, to help add that energy. So, 
Yeah. You don't, I, don't, I never needed vitamins for energy. Okay, but some people do. Not everyone has the same body, McKenna. Okay, so there's a lot of food insecurity, not just around the world in developing countries, but in the U.S. too. And a huge portion of the crops that are grown in the U.S. are used to feed animals that we then eat. And so yes. we could have had a ton of more food distributed throughout the U.S., than if we didn't invest a ton of that food into animals who need to eat it over their lives and grow and grow just for a handful of people to eat them. So instead of yeah, 100 people getting these crops, now only 10 people are getting meat from this cow that was fed all of those crops. Yeah, and those crops, like the amount of protein in those crops, since cows are vegetarians, mm -hmm. um, that has more protein, mm -hmm. what each cow is fed, has more protein than what the cow actually produces. Mm -hmm. One thing that is interesting though is um, one of my classmates brought it up in like a project she's doing is plants are becoming less nutritious, which therefore means that, you know, the animals that are being fed those are becoming less nutritious as well. And that just has to do with, I don't know the exact specifics, but humans are at fault, <laughs> we'll just say. Number one, use bars of shampoo. I don't really like the bars of conditioner, but bars of shampoo work great. And then you're using less uh, plastic bottles. Also bars of soap. They're awesome too. Yeah. Less plastic but bottles. I, um, I will say I do have dandruff and it, that doesn't really work for me. But like bars of soap, conditioner bars, like I'll mm -hmm. use those. But shampoo bars, like I still mm -hmm. have to use something bottled. Well, you can also use... Um, so, oh, wash your hair less is also a thing. I only wash my hair like about once a week. I've heard and that I was do, crap. I do use a scalp like exfoliator to help clean it and manage that. Um, but bars of soap. Um, let's see. Coral safe sunscreens. They're not actually coral safe, sadly. Reports have come out that they are just as damaging as the regular sunscreens. So do your research first. Plastic water bottles suck. Um, if you use them, what century are you in? You can take them through the airport as long as they're out of, not filled with any liquid, and then you can refill them there and have them your whole trip. You don't need to buy plastic water bottles the whole time. And you can get a Brita filter for home if you're, yes. you, but remember to change out the filter. Mm -hmm. um, don't litter. Believe it or not, people still litter. And that's, if you leave trash, you are trash. Congratulations. Um, <laughs> Don't use straws, not because they're a waste of plastic, because really they don't really use that much plastic, but they give you wrinkles around your mouth. Um, if you're buying a car, pick one that gets better mileage per hour. Um, have less children. If you and your partner are <laughs> committed to each other and only having children together, only have a maximum of two kids. So that way they are your replacements when you and your partner die. One kid is best because then that will decrease the global population. The global population is the main cause of all these climate issues we're having today because it's getting too big. Use bidets because toilet papers take a lot. And yes, you may say, well, bidets use water. Toilet papers use, it takes water to make toilet papers. It takes water and energy to transport that toilet paper all around to make it in a factory, yada, yada, yada. It's probably the same, but less with a bidet. Um, oh, get a double flusher if you're reinstalling a new toilet. One, a smaller flush for just pee, and then a bigger flush for poop. Also, if it's yellow, let it mellow. So if you just pee, you can pee on top of it later. It really isn't a big deal. Um, you don't need to buy eco-friendly things. Just use what you already have. Purchase vegan products if you can, or plant-based products. Um... Oh, if you need to buy multiple things instead of ordering, ordering it on Amazon and getting like four separate packages, just the next time you're running errands, go out and get it. Really, it'll save a lot more energy and you're going out and running those errands anyway. Um, thrift. Thrift shopping is so much fun. It's so much cheaper than regular stores and it's sustainable. So, and I always find my favorite things from thrift stores, so. And if you use the service thread up, um, recyclable packaging mm. and you could also choose an option like my local warehouse or whatever so it has mm. the shortest shipping distance possible mm -hmm. 
And then hotel soaps. If you don't need to use the little squeezy shampoo and conditioner things that they set out for individual people, don't use them. Don't take them. However, take that bar of soap that you had to use. I only take them if I need them. But I take okay. the bars of soap because I use bars of soap. And they <laughs> like you they give everyone their own bar of soap. And then like you only use it a few times. But there are some like larger hotel chains like Hilton I think does this where any leftover soap they have it like cleaned and then donated it to developing countries but well, not every hotel does that that's what I was but gonna my say question... like they're probably just gonna throw it away if it's still in there especially because yeah. COVID so it's better mm -hmm. if you just take it and like have it on hand for if guests come to visit you or and something. actually put it to use or for but... travel you can I always mean, ask them when you check in Let's just I mean, ask them when they ch you check in. Yes, ask them what, like, they do. But also, yeah, ask them what they do would probably be the smartest thing. But just don't touch them. <laughs> and but you can leave the house. you didn't touch it. Yes, I know. But ask housekeeping, like, what the deal is. Or, you know, go to hotels. I mean, this, you go with the best, cheapest option, whatever. But some of them are getting the shampoo and conditioner pumps on the walls which yeah which are great so maybe leave a recommendation for the hotel be like i really wish you would do this i'm sad that you're wasting all this plastic it'll save you money it'll save you money mm -hmm. and make you look better yeah okay that was pretty much it cool i had Thanks. one more thought slash question slash tip mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that is, what is your opinion on reusable toilet paper and diapers? I would do reusable diapers. I mean, I do reusable pads. You still got to leave the poopy diapers. off. But reusable paper towels is basically rags and... No, not paper towels. Toilet paper. toilet paper. No. No. Paper but reusable towels, diapers, yeah. yes. The problem, I can't. I the can't. thing is, like, I don't, I don't have a problem with like washing and reusing that stuff. I have a problem with like, where do you put it after you use it, and how long is it gonna stay there, and like, um, you know, like the logistics. Yeah. If well, you go through like eight diapers a day, and then so over two days, just do one diaper load. Yeah, but where are you putting them when they're dirty? Yeah have a sealed container. I really have to pee. Well, I'll never have to worry about the diaper thing because that's <laughs> disgusting. Um, as for the toilet paper, opt for a bidet. <laughs> I mean, yes. Yeah. But a lot of people use, and they call it family cloth. <gasps> Ew, they share it? <laughs> Ooh. No, I can't. And I get UTIs anyway. They have a little basket at their toilet, and then they have a container that they put the... But see, the thing is, usually, like, before they put it in the container, like, with dirties, they, like, have to rinse it or wash it, because you don't want to just, like, sit in there with poop on it, like... Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah, ew. I could, I could maybe see just doing it for pee. Yeah. But no, no poop, poop. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. And That's like a UTI. diapers, it's like I totally get it, but like I don't want like every time I change a baby's diaper, I don't want to be like, okay, I have to immediately wash this now. Yeah. You know, like, mm -mm. Mm -mm. I say, you know, keep keep the rags to clean your countertops. Uh, you can make exceptions for toilet paper. Yeah. Also, just use less toilet paper. You don't need that much. Depending on the ply, you need like what three pieces two pieces if it's super thick yeah yeah just use less reusable menstrual pads though i'm i'm okay with it i will say on the um speaking of this stuff um don't wash whenever you wash clothes like some of the like part like fabric particles including some plastics um do leach out of your clothes but like obviously over time, like using reusable 
pads or diapers is still going to put less plastic in the environment than using those individual ones. Um, but it also applies like wear your jeans more than once, wear your jackets more than once before you wash them. Like unless they actually get super dirty, like because you were rolling in the mud or an animal pooped on you or something. Just yeah. rewear them if you just wear put, them your, if you, put your jeans in the freezer. Yeah, I do that. bacteria. That's what I do. I like never wash my jeans. Yeah. Unless they actually get something on them, but yeah. Apparently exactly. there is like a filter trap you can get that would like prevent those particles from leaching out. Uh, you guys can look into that if you're interested. I don't. I'm not in charge of my washing machine or dryer. And again, I'm interested in the sustainability of my wallet. I don't want to buy mm -hmm. extra, like all these extra stuff to be more sustainable because I feel like that's not a sustainable. A, because it's extra stuff and extra packaging, extra products. Mm -hmm. And B, it's just like more cost to the world mm -hmm. and to me. And so do your research because your wallet is important. Money is yeah. an important part of sustainability as well. There are a lot of sustainable options that actually save you money, but there are a lot that are going to cost you money. So it's just... At least initially. Again, it's what works for you. Things like Castile soap to make all your other soaps. If you are about that life, go for it. It's definitely going to save you money. Mm -hmm. But other things like... Yeah, buying a fancy Berkey water filter or the thing McKenna just said to trap plastics. Like, you're going to live. You okay. Do what <laughs> works for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't have the money for that. I am on a living stipend. That's not, I'm not even on a salary. Okay. <laughs> I can't afford most of this. Yes. Also, yeah, do your best, but you can't be perfect and individually if we all did a little better it would have a big impact but the the things that are really causing most of the damage that we see today are like these big industries um so either avoid those industries um some of them you can't really avoid because your car needs gas or whatnot but um yeah choose the companies you support and also wisely if you can since you brought up like the cars thing, um, sometimes I do listen to the podcast, How to Save a Planet. Um, obviously, I recommend if you're listening to this podcast, you're obviously interested in that kind of stuff. Um, but they had one like cars episode and they're like new car, like new like gas powered car versus new electric car. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, in the long run, the electric car is going to be more cost effective and environmentally mm -hmm. friendly even factoring in that, like, you have to plug it in and use fossil fuels to charge it. Mm -hmm. um, but if you don't have the money for that, buying a used car is pretty much just as good as buying a new mm -hmm. electric car. Yeah. Like, buying a used gas power car, especially, like, just look at gas mileage. Like, the yeah. I drove Serena's car that was a hand-me-down from a relative for a while, and mm -hmm. it got, like, 2,324 miles per gallon. Mm -hmm. But when I finally bought my car, I obviously don't have the money for electric, but mine averages like 34 to 40 miles per gallon. Mm -hmm. Like it's so much better. Yeah. The best and thing though, cheaper. yeah, the best thing though ultimately is to keep driving the car that you have until it mm -hmm. cannot drive anymore because the new <laughs> car is still new everything. So keep driving your car. And it's mm -hmm. better to keep driving your car that has bad mileage or bad whatever than to create a whole new car. So drive your car into the ground <laughs> and then you get yourself a new car. And then it's also great. Car. It's also great if you have a Tesla and your home runs on geothermal power, solar power, wind oh, power. Yeah, that'd be power great. So I wish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, well, that money. <laughs> Well, my boyfriend's parents, that's what they do, so oh. they have their Tesla plugged into their solar-powered house <laughs> that runs also on geothermal energy for cloudy days. Okay, 
Tori, anything else you have rapid fire real quick or no? No. Okay. Um, if for grocery shopping, if you can't go to a store that often, like I said earlier, I live over 30 minutes away. Um, I'm actually part of Thrive Gives. Like I'm one of the people who gets a membership for free. Uh, Thrive Gives is a carbon neutral company. Um, at least what they send their products in, not necessarily the products themselves, but what they send those in. All that's like recyclable, compostable. Um, they're co aiming to be carbon, carbon negative by 2025. Good stuff. Good stuff. When you are buying clothes, like not just thrifting, like maybe buying new clothes, aim for like cotton and linen products, at least majority cotton linen, because a lot of the other fibers like um, spandex, rayon, anything, nylon, whatever, plastic based. Um, so yeah, cotton, linen tend to be better. Again, listen to the how to save a planet, fast fashion episode. Um, I we, feel like though, then we're we're kind of getting into the territory of like sustainability, environmentalism versus like environmental toxins in our world. You know, like I feel well, like, I mean, fast fashion is one thing, yes, but like the concept of like plastics being in our clothing, well, I don't it's feel also like that unsustainable necessarily because it's we're also that that assuming that we're. McKenna, don't cut, don't talk. Sorry, well, I have two freaking minutes. Okay. It's also that that clothing with those synthetic materials lasts less time. Like the stuff with made from cotton and linen lasts a lot longer too. Um, lasts a lot more washes and stuff. Yeah. So it's also in that way. Um, and then like when you're cruising or traveling, like there's this site called Friends of the Earth that rates cruise ships based on environmentality. Right now, Disney Cruise Line is the most environmentally friendly, but they still have plenty of improvement. Um, certain airlines, um, either all their flights or some of their flights are um, like waste, zero waste, um, or waste neutral or something like that. Or they have like a carbon offset program. Always just look into that. Because um, we're going to travel, but we could always travel smarter. Okay. Okay. So are we doing a quiz or no? no? No. I mean, Tori and I can do it. Yeah. If you want us to dive deeper into any of these topics, please let us know it down in the comments. I mean, I would love to do a vegan episode, but that might just be me. Let me know if it's not just me. I don't want to do it. <laughs> You're the one that brought it up first i'm yeah decreasing the amount of red meat but i don't want to well, do no i mean like podcast i think that's ages ago triggered. you and tori were like we can do a vegan episode and we can sit down and ask you vegan questions i said you could do a vegan episode maybe in the future anyway if you care to stay tuned and listen to serena and i take this quiz please do but mckenna has to go so thank you for listening to this episode do all the things rate review subscribe download comment blah 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 and thank you thank so you. stay tuned we're gonna do the quiz but bye okay. mckenna bye mckenna well i can stay on until i get a tutor <laughs> oh my god <laughs> what were you peeing your pants about then well i just had to i didn't want to be midpoint and have oh this isn't god. a quiz where like it's gonna give me like a personality result or something hey can you guess how long it takes for your trash to decompose how long will it take this cigarette butt to naturally decompose? Three to six months, six to nine months, nine to 12 months, one to five years. One to five years. Six to nine months. Nine to 12 months. One to five years. How about this apple core? Okay, I'm done. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Wait, let me check my trash. I have an apple core in it. <laughs> what about this apple there. core? Seven days, two weeks, four weeks, two months. I think two months. Yeah. It's like in four weeks, I don't think it would be like gone. Yeah. Even in two months, I don't know. 
Yeah. And this mm. newspaper, one week, three weeks, six weeks, 12 weeks. I guess 12. I guess it would depend. Like, did it rain? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. I was like, did you leave it in your yard for a few days and then it rained? Right. I guess 12. Oh, six. Interesting. I feel like we've had newspapers that lasted longer than that. Yeah. I mean, but it would have to be if they're outside in the environment because you can obviously like keep them oh. in your house and they're fine. Oh, I see. I see. Or I guess in the oh. trash, right? Like, oh, I see, I see, I see. Okay. Cause yeah, it's not gonna like decompose sitting on your desk. That's what I was just thinking. I was like, I don't know. We had a lot what? of newspapers. Don't we still have newspapers from like the eighteen hundreds? Yeah, the eighteen hundreds. Oh yeah. Yeah. How long will it take this plastic bag to go back to the earth? Back to the earth. Ten to twenty years. Twenty to thirty years. Thirty to forty years. Forty to fifty years. Saying 40 to 50. I'm saying 20, 30. 10 to 20. What? Take them to Target. They'll recycle them. <laughs> Target also has electronic recycling. What about these disposable diapers? 50 years, 150 years, 200 years, 450 years. Ew. Hello, there's a lot of diapers on our planet right now, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Ew, don't have babies. I'm, gonna say 200. I'm just kidding. You've, you have every right to have children if that's what you want. Ew. 200 years. Ew. I'll say 450. 450 years. <gasps> 450 years. What? That means every single diaper that has ever been used yeah. since they've been invented is still on the still planet. on this planet full of poop like full of poop in its og state essentially when were diapers invented brb i mean i'm sure they probably like at landfills only break stuff up so like maybe that speeds up the process but oh in <gasps> theory, yeah <gasps> disposable diapers were invented in 1948 by johnson and johnson good that was not that long ago yeah. All right. This banana peel. One to four weeks. Two to five. Three to seven. Six to nine weeks. I'll say one to four. Yeah. Wow. I'm going to say one to four. I feel like it breaks oh. down pretty quick when I take it off the banana. <gasps> Two to five. All right. Wait. I guess it's still encompassing like, the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. One to four. <laughs> two to five. That means it definitely won't happen in one week, but it yeah. might take more than four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's dumb. Three to seven. Wait. <laughs> that's stupid. Okay. How long will it take for this aluminum can to completely disappear? 10 wow. to 50 years, 80 to 200 years, 300 to 400 years, 420 to 500 years. I'll say three to four, but I'm going to say 80 to 200. So I feel like I've seen some cans, like old cans, you know, that were, look pretty like disintegrating. Pretty sad. 80 to 200. Hmm. What about a plastic bottle? 450 years, 550 years, 650 years. 750 years. I'm going to say 650. I'll say 550. Oh, 450. That's still bad. <laughs> that means every plastic water bottle that's ever been used is still in its yeah. state, probably. Including all the ones used to make diapers. Because I think that's a thing. Because, right? isn't, because you know, like the super absorbent stuff that's inside diapers. Mm -hmm. like that's really weird texture. I feel like they make that out of plastic bottles sometimes. You know, I haven't touched that many diapers in a long time. It's not because I've touched them. It's because, like, I just learned. Oh, yeah. It's like, you know, that, like, that absorbable jelly weird stuff. Oh. You know? 
like that's in like a in the I don't know what else. <laughs> anyway. It's all right. Four hundred fifty years. And how long will it take for a glass bottle to go bye bye? Five hundred years, one million years, two million years, four million years. But how would we know? We haven't had glass I know, bottles. For right. Years. I guess they have. They can put it in a chamber and speed up the time. I don't know. Speed I'll up say four time. million because obsidian is, you know, glass. Oh shit. One million. So, question though. So we do all this stuff to specifically have glass all the time. But eventually, you know, we die and all our glassware will get thrown away, which sure we've gotten good use out of. But then it's still going to take all this time to decompose. Right? Is it really any better for the environment? What is life? I mean, well, it doesn't have like toxins in it that leach into the environment. Yeah. And like, it can't get into like, a, well, it can get into a micro form, but I, I've never like watched in a documentary a seagull eating a piece of glass, pieces of plastic. <laughs> they die. I mean, they, they would die if they ate a piece of glass too. I mean, yeah, but it's like sharp. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they die a lot faster. <laughs> I think it might have more to do with like the, the toxins, the plastic. Okay. I did know. So then it's less the plastic, but then it's like plastic is less about sustainability and more about environmental toxins, which isn't really a conversation of sustainability, right? I mean, no, I definitely still think it is because of the production of plastic also is a lot. Whereas for glass, I mean, it's glass might even be more, but just the means of production. And the products used to make glass, like glass is what melted minerals, sand, essentially, yeah. right? Something like that. And yeah. whereas plastic is like all these man-made chemicals and whatnots. True. All right. How long will this fishing line take to disintegrate? Six hundred years. 700 years, 800 years, 900 years. I'll say 800. Why not? I'll say 700. 600 years. How are we fishing one? I know. <sighs> because they can formulaically figure it out by how much has disintegrated so far. Does that mean it's accurate? No, but. <laughs> What about leather? 10 years, 50 years, 100 years, 150 years. I'll say 10. No, 10 years, Serena, the, the, the leather jacket sitting in the closet would be crumbled. If it's in a landfill, okay. aren't we saying if it's like outside? I guess so. I would say 50 years. 50 years. <laughs> ah. Okay. And plywood, one year, one to three years, one to five years, one to seven years. Well, shit, don't use plywood to build your outdoor shed. <laughs> you can treat it so that it lasts longer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I've ever built anything. <laughs> uh, one to... Meh. I did one to three. One to five. Oh, one, two, three. But like one to five includes one to three. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this quiz. It definitely it. won't take more than three years, Serena. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's so dumb. <laughs> How long will it take for these wool socks to decompose? <laughs> Ew. Wool socks. Talk the legs. Ew. One year, one to three years, one to five years, ten years. Oh, no, I'll say a year. I'll say ten. One to five years. 
What about a paper towel? Two to four weeks, four to six weeks, six to eight weeks, eight to ten weeks. I'll say... I'll say six to eight weeks. I'll say four to six. Two to four weeks. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. That makes sense. And lastly, how long will it take the rubber sole of a boot to cease to exist? 10 to 30 years, 30 to 50 years, 50 to 80 years, 100 to 150 years. Um, I'll say... 150. I'll say 50 to 80. 30 to 50 years. Because rubber gets like dry rot kind of thing. Mm. You know? So then it yeah. kind of crumbles, I guess. This one's... <laughs> Did we get many of these right? <laughs> I got three out of 15. <laughs> yeah. But okay. I scored better than 25% of others. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. All right. Well. Well. All right. Thanks for staying all the way to the end of the podcast, people. It's the end of the day. It's the end. This was a long one. All righty. Thanks for Thanks watching. Thanks so much for watching. And we'll yes. see you all later. later. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye. You have to say it, Serena. They can't see you. Bye. <laughs> All right. I'm just like waving. Bye. Sorry, I make the video version. <laughs> Thanks for listening to this week's Long Distance Sisters. Be sure to subscribe for more episodes and leave a good review. And check out the video version on our YouTube channel. You can find all of our other social media information in the description. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.